GA Research Symposium and Exhibition 2022. <laughs> 2023, sorry. Okay. So good afternoon, guys. I hope you guys have a good afternoon on Sunday and gather with us at Batam Island, Indonesia. All right. And I would like to say, all of you guys are being prepared and groomed nicely for the presentation and your sharings later on. And without further ado, let us invite the first group. For the presentation, let's welcome America and team. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, Melanie, good afternoon to the guests. Me, myself, Marika, and Miss Julia focusing about recycling water. Today, today we talk about uh, environmental sustainability. What is environmental sustainability? Why is it important? Environmental sustainability is important to preserve resources like, to preserve resources like clean air, water, and wildlife for future generations, ensuring that human society operate with ecological border. So what we can do, we ride, we ride bicycle, we walk, especially how to minimize usage of water. <laughs> Hotel is known as uh, usage a lot of water. What can we do to be a sustainable in hotel? We can reduce, reuse, and recycle. Reduce. We can reduce uses of water to educate the staff here in this hotel to follow the standard of consumption, to follow the standard of consumption of water. We can recycle water. We can recycle water. Resources from water. We can recycle water. We can recycle water and grey water. I mean, sources grey water from kitchen sink, bathtub, and laundry. Since my group is split into two, there are further explanation about this uh, grey water. Reuse. We can reuse the uh, rain water. Rain water free drop from the sky. So why we should uh, recycle, uh, reuse it? Water is not a new, uh, new for us. This is an old practice, actually. I want to share with you guys uh, how my father uh, uh, harvesting uh, rainwater. We back in my childhood, I saw my father how he uh, har harvest rainwater. Before it's rained, he prepared everything <coughs> what he needed for harvesting rainwater. He prepared a bucket and big drum. When it's rain, he, re, uh, he let the flow, uh, he let the rain flow down first to the ground to uh, to clean the, the roof, <coughs> to clean the roof, and to clean the roof with the, the, the debris and dust, and and grass. And after he, after a while, he start harvesting rainwater. After he harvests rainwater, he makes sure that. Uh, no mosquitoes stay there and he covered up to make sure that no mosquitoes stay there and to avoid contamination He we could show immediately within a week like wash the floor uh, Water the plant water the, uh, the, the flower and uh, vegetable garden It's uh, it shows here that my father never Never used any special equipment to harvest rainwater, but then he still can harvest rainwater But 
always have so much equipment that make our life easier. We can choose from cheap to expensive one. Let's say we can uh, be, uh, install here in this hotel a uh, big tank of. We can install here a uh, big tank. So it costs about eight thousand to fifteen thousand Singapore dollar. It sounds costly. Yes, it's costly. It's cost. It's it's costly in a short run, but. You can save a lot of money when it's long run. You never know. In two years' time, you can save how many thousand dollars in your water bill. I passed to Miss Julia that she can give another an example of uh, the benefits of using uh, rainwater and the conclusion. Thank you, Miss Julia, please. Thank you. Uh, so we have, so we have all oh, heard from my friend how we can uh, restore the rainwater. So everyone might be uh, thinking, okay, let's say we successfully uh, restore this rainwater, so how are we going to use it and where are we going to use it? So uh, there are so many ways uh, we can reuse this rainwater, but today we, I, I want to focus one example, uh, which is a uh, rooftop garden, as we can see here. <clears throat> so uh, this, uh, I believe that this hotel or a lot of hotels have a rooftop, and if they, if it does, if they does, uh, they can make a garden in the roof and plant uh, a seed or even small plants like a uh, uh, that has a dense root and also uh, in able to endure sunlight, so that uh, able to endure sunlight, and we can use the rainwater that we store to water that garden, that uh, mini garden in our roof. Um, so today why uh, I choose uh, this uh, rainwater as an example, I mean this rooftop garden as an example, uh, because having rooftop garden, uh, it will improve the air quality in the hotel and also our guests can enjoy uh, the beautiful sight and the cool breeze and you know, they can relax like this in, as you can see in the photo. <coughs> By, by using rainwater, they uh, they it will you know, they, they can harvest the organic vegetable from their uh, fresh garden to the plate. And just now we have had my uh, teammate share how her great, how her father uh, reuse the rainwater in agriculture. If we can use in agriculture, why not use in uh, ag domestic and industrial too? So if by using rainwater will improve the quality and the quantity of groundwater and also promote uh, promote the energy and water consumption and does not require filtration system uh, for the landscape, which is a uh, very cost safety. So if we are able to use successfully this rainwater, it will benefit not only the environment, but also uh, the hotel cost, like our uh, water bill. Yes, thank you. Okay, guys. Any questions from the floor? Now is the Q and A session. Any questions? Anyone? Uh, for me, I, I did when I go back home. And then that day, um, when my father um, 
uh, harvesting or rainwater. Uh, she she do uh, he did uh, like uh, filter it and uh, uh, sterilization. When he filter it, he used the white cloth. Yeah. Even this uh, uh, white shirt you can uh, you, you can use also for uh, filter. And then when he uh, uh, sterilization, he bought it so we can use for cooking and um, cooking and drinking. Yeah, it's safe. So you say that it's rainwater is more safer and more convenient. Yeah, because it, as long as you use, uh, uh, I mean, the moment that you harvest the, the rainwater, you must use immediately because uh, rainwater, that we bear in mind that is rainwater is not fresh from our tap, you know. So uh, we must quickly use it to avoid contamination. Yeah. To stay, uh, when, you risk, uh, when you store the rainwater, uh, make sure that you cover up to, uh, to, uh, to uh, avoid the debris, dust, and dirt that the insects to be inside it. Whatever the the, uh, uh, whatever the store, the drum that you use it, you need to cover up uh, to make sure the no mosquito. Because once the the mosquitoes stay there, uh, way inside the drum, um, and then it start the algae uh, build up inside the, the the drum, and then that's the cause of contamination. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For me, it's like very important. Uh, right now, it's like even more here. Because uh, everybody is scared. So, yeah, that's say, right. Like you say, that's why it's uh, how you how you handle about this. Because it's like uh, you you can't you can't even know when the mosquito will be coming. Yeah, for the safer for the safer that you use, you must uh, consume immediately. That's why I said, uh, and then for the longer term that you can uh, uh, store the water. For, uh, for the longer time, it's for one month only. To make sure that uh, no mosquitoes stay there, you cover up uh, properly. Yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. Any more questions? Grace? Yes. Earlier um, you, you said that um, hotels can um, actually use the rain uh, water. So, what are the leg uh, legal regulations? Oh, sorry. Okay, so what are the legal uh, regulations and permits required for um, harvesting rainwater? Actually, the rainwater is free drop from the sky. So but why you should just harvesting it? You can just build in your, you know, even your home in, in this hotel. Uh, let's say uh, if the government allow, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's a restriction that day that you cannot uh, uh, store, uh, store rainwater, then you can ask the government. But for me, it's rainwater, I think moving to... Uh, I, I don't know, I, because in my, in my country, in my place, you just store the water, that's it. Yeah, but if you, I, I think if this uh, hotel, if the government, uh, you know, everything that uh, must have, uh, like permit, then you can, you can, maybe you can ask the government or, or you, you, if they require the, the requirements, then you can. Yeah, so that's why I asked what are the legal permits and regulations. Okay, I think it depends on the country. And so, for example, I, I believe there's a lot of water that have been using. So, of course, before we use, right, uh, we need to uh, we need to seek out what is the government regulation and all that, right? Uh, so, we, we are not claiming here that rainwater is as safe as, as safe as the tip water here, yeah? but we are just uh, saying that to to be a sustainable environment, all right. Uh, we need to, you know, instead of wasting it, we need to reuse it. Uh, and here we don't mean like, uh, you know, consuming it, but instead using it as a washing floor and all that. Uh, so it, it should not be affecting to the health. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. So, what 
are the solution that you have. Okay, thank you for uh, thank you for the question. So just uh, just now I elaborate when we pick our plants, right? We pick that can endure our water and endure the sunlight because uh, the rooftop is as we all know it is uh, directly to the sunlight, right? So there's a lot of plants that require uh, you know uh, some need more sunlight, some need more rain, uh, some some don't even need a water, right? That's why we uh, emphasize enjoy can enjoy sunlight and then have a dense roof for the, the rainy season. All right, thank you. Thank you, Verica and T. water recycling system <coughs> and the commercial one. Um, a method of saving water and reducing total sewage volumes. This system filter can chlorinate and drainage can from tubs, laundry and sink, and reuse water for non-potable purposes. Um, for example, in the commercial building, they can use for cooling up towers to um, to make a pass water to control the solid buildup. And gray water also can be used for um, walking, cleaning walkways, parking lots, and suited places in irrigation, like golf course. They can most effectively use this for watering um, fruit trees, ornamental plants, and food crops. So works lagoons providing the food nutrients for fish. This requires a grade level filtration to avoid contaminating the mini ecosystem and poisoning the creatures that rely on it. Guys, if you are contaminated of gray water, please proceed immediately to wash your hands and sanitize your hands with um, with I wash your hands with soap and sanitize your hand with um, alcohol and um, and hand sanitizer um, to avoid health risk. So I will I will pass to my friend for the conclusion and the benefits of green water. Yes, uh, as you can see from this picture, there is a 
clean water supply, we use it for like washing the dishes, like water purifier, uh, souring, uh, and laundry. And then what we can do, we collect those water, uh, we collection those water, we do filtration and we do treatment of those water, and then we storage it again and we pumping it, and then we can reuse again for flushing the toilet, for floor wash washing and hard washing and gardening. So the benefit of reusing grey water is conserve energy and water, benefits the environment and lower operation cost. So that brings us to the end of our presentation in construction from the session. We can learn about how to process grey water that can be reused. Thank you. Thank you. Question one. Here are any questions? If not, Miss Melody will ask the first question. <laughs> My first question to you guys is: I can see on the slide lower operation cost. Uh, by what percentage has been lowered? Do you guys have any idea? Yeah, uh, because we those water, right? We just not waste it. Just just waste like that. So we doing like we collect those water and we do like some treatment and then we can reuse again. That's why it's like lower uh, operation cost. That's all. It's like, yeah, don't like just whiz whiz. Any more questions? Masito? I'm really surprised. I'm sorry, I'm really surprised. Uh, why you call that is grey water? Yes. Why not green water, red water, yellow water? <laughs> okay.
bacteria. Yeah, you can stick to the gray water because um, but the gray water cannot drink. So you can take a bacteria then, like a diarrhea. If you drink it, you ha you can have a diarrhea. So if you are avo avoiding the the take the avoid the health risk, so wash your hands immediately and sanitize your hand with the with the alcohol and hand sanitizer. But how can we prevent it okay. from happening? Yeah, you you can um, you prevent if you someone to wash someone to um, like 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 for example. Um, someone to cleaning the walkways, so you you need to use a boot and wearing a gloves. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I have to, have to ask this um, follow up question for Miss Melanie from Miss Melanie's question um, about lower operation costs. How can you say um, filtering the treatment of a gray water can cost uh, lower operation costs? Because as we all know. Treatment caused a lot of you know process and um, yeah costly and materials that they're going to use all those equipments so technology yeah, technology so how can we defend the lower operation cost? Okay, thanks for the question. Before we start doing this right, we have to think or or we have to prepare how much cost we need to make all those things. Example, we have to make this this this. We have to think first, like how much cost we use for at first. I mean, for the making the things, how to process it. Yeah, sorry, I'm not asking um, what's the process beforehand. I'm asking roughly if you research how much will be the cost. Do you have a, a, a rough, a draft of cost? How much will it cost? Or do you know how how much is <laughs> how much is uh, how much is the cost of a, a filter in the market? Nowadays. Actually, it's costly. It's costly like eight thousand, eight thousand to eighteen thousand. Is the yeah depend if the if the the process is big the hotel. Yeah. Yes. I know. Sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you said it's costly, right? So, um, you're you you're gonna own. Um, uh, introduce this to the public or to an industry. So. How big and um, how will you convince the industry to create those treatments using your costly operation? Which contradicts to your slides, which says lower operation costs. Is there any possible way aside from doing the treatment? Because you're doing clean water supply, reusing it, like it was a thing, it was a water purifier. As we all know, Singapore is always doing it. Right? So you can ask them to other countries. So how can you convince them? Uh, for me, it's that is possible. Uh, for me, it's like we like using like costly like a lot of money at first for those things. But the rest, we don't need to like using money again and again. Oh. And we yeah. have to try and test it. Yeah, that's right. Yes, you got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. One and last question. I saw a handy face. One last question for this side. Uh, yes, uh, we're talking about <laughs> environmental sustainab uh, sustainability. Uh, aside from tap water, what other things can we use to sustain our environment? Hundred percent, seventy percent. Sorry, can you repeat? Yes, yes. No, this is yeah, environmental sustainability. Sustainability, correct? Yes. Oh, yeah. So aside from tap water, what? What other things can we reuse to sustain our environment? Sorry, it's not really this one is not related to the <laughs> topic <laughs> that I'm talking about. Yeah, that's about a gray water, correct? You're yeah. reusing it, you're, you're, you're filtering it. And you know, the gray water is, it came from the clean water, then from this laundry facilities, like bathroom, like you're taking a bath, we do those treatments with that water. It's like dirt water, we process it, and we can reuse again. It's so not that water. Yeah. Ah, yeah. After we use. Ah, uh, yeah, still. Um, are you confusing me? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one. Omit the top water. So, what other things can be reused to sustain our environment? What other examples? <laughs> 
they are focusing on Korean yeah. 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 So, yeah, so you're yeah. like, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> if you want, you can, you know, like gardening, you can water the plant, yeah. Yeah. it goes water. See, as the feature of the toilet, placing the toilet, everything is there. Oh, I, I, I didn't know that you only have one topic, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah because I, since we're talking about environmental sustainability, we are supposed to know what other areas uh, we covered, right? But I didn't know that every group has this uh, topic. So that's why I was Okay, no problem. I try to be like Mr. James here. Make sense? <laughs>
so such as the partial customization which is the three R's how many of you have a thorough look in your wardrobe or closet and found out so many clothes that you haven't wear for years yeah. can you raise your hands up don't be shy I'm one of you <laughs> yes so what are you going to do with it I go donate yes yes you donate I design. So again and redesign uh -huh. It's another fashion for another body. Example, if you have a t-shirt, you can give another... Uh, uh, Redesign. Redesign. For me, I have an example for the old clothes that can I use. Uh -huh. Example for the t-shirt. You can make us a fashion for, for you know, like a uh, mini skirt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That what? That, yes. Hand me down. Yes, hand me down. So if you're an older sister and you have those knees, nephews, and all those younger sisters, you can give it to them. So that is what we call fashion customization or personal uh, person notification. Sorry, I'm having a tongue twister. All right. So there are many, many fashion industries right now who's doing that. Do you know that H&M, if you're going to bring all your unused clothes, they're going to give you 10% on your next purchase with them. So that's how they reuse, how they recycle how they redesign their fashions. And because of the fast fashion nowadays, everybody is keeping on the trends, right? Yes. Yes. So 3D printing in fashion. Have you heard of it? Yeah? Yes. I've heard some of you. So 3D printing is a uh, use of a 3D printer. So Tommy Hilfinger is one of the fashion industry right now who's using 3D printed clothes. In that way, they can produce a smaller amount of clothes you know, a smaller amount of fabrics, a smaller amount of materials that only suitable for that certain customers. Because they are um, very uh, high-end products, so there's only a few of them. So it's like, if this season I just want to have a come out of like 100 pieces, limited edition of this type of fashion, they can do that through 3D printing, okay? Bio couture, bio couture, is the use of a sustainable materials, such as, do you know that the seaweed, the fiber from the seaweed can be netted and then can be used as a fabric material? And that is, can be made into a textile or fabric, which can be sold as our fashion clothes right now. So take for example, the jacket I'm wearing. This is made from the steel. So this jacket can be reversible. If you have one design, Dysigual usually uses this kind of design. As if you all know, if you know how to use it, not so. Yeah, I'm letting you know. <laughs> so um, that is one way also of using your uh, clothes. You know, making it another wrong way. Because as what my friend and my teammate Rose said, fashion industry nowadays is the third. <laughs> sorry, I get put it back. All right, is the third causing pollution all over the country, right? Why? Because we girls love to change clothes. We girls, not only girls, also the boys. Yes, everyone. Yeah, everyone <laughs> loves to buy uh, things that we saw in the, you know, in the mall, especially the sales. But it ended up in our closet with a price tag in there and not having used it for many, many years. And then it came out of fashion and then we just throw it away. So let's all change our mindset for that, okay? Let's think. Let's all help. Let's help our earth. All right, everyone? So let's do the fashion rebirth. There are so many ways that you can do a fashion sustainability. Let's do fashion rebirth. And please, fashion shouldn't cost our head. Let's not add into the pollution into our landfill nowadays. All right, everyone? And that's it for me. I'm Sherilyn. And that is Rose. And thank you. Yes.
Uh, so uh, my name is Julia. Uh, we are talking about, if I don't misunderstand, we are talking about the sustainability. How can the hotel be sustainable, right? So this question is uh, how it, how does it relate to the hotel? All right. Um, the topic is about environmental sustainability. But if you want to relate it into a hotel, hotel nowadays are using those bed sheets, linens, towels, towels, and even this. If we are going to connect it in fashion, they can always use these fabrics, send it to someone who's going to reuse it, redesign it, and give it back to them. But do you know those patches? If you've been uh, watching the next in fashion in Netflix, yes. who's yes. watching it? The winner uses those patches fabrics, which patches every different design of fabrics that can turn into blankets, double covers, towels, and clothes. So if you want to connect it in the hotel, that's my answer for you. Okay, thank you. Additional yes. sharing about his, uh, about her questions. Mm -hmm. I give an additional sharing about his questions regarding the hotel and sustainability about the fashion, like what he say. I have an experience when working in Mount Dana Hotel. We keep changing the floor mat. We recycle that with the floor mat. We are cutting and we putting in another design. Going also for the curtain, we can do it in another fashion. If the curtain we can take it out and we can make it like this. It's like making recycle, redesign, re and we can use it again in the same hotel, but another is another design. It's not the same one. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that. Any questions? Any yes. more questions? Okay, so this uh, fashion, right? I mean, is the Recycle, right? Yes. To new, to how about the material and then the, you know, is how long can be like one year or two years use or what? What do you mean the material? The how material, the cotton. Okay. Okay. You can your 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 used clothes can stay for how many years in the landfills? So if you are thinking of fashion sustainability, you can do all those things that I just said: recycle, reuse. And then after that, um, those clothes can be, you know, biodegradable in a long term, not rushed, not in just two years. It will take more years for it to biodegrade and be like a fertilizer or one of the landfills in there. So let's not let's not do that. So if we have time, if we can just help our earth do the refashion and all those stuff, then let's do it. All right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Janice again? Hello. Hello. My question is very simple. Yes. So we are talking about fashion, like, like just, just like this, fashion shouldn't cost the earth. Mm -hmm. So how can you encourage those people, because we are uh, sustainable, we are using the sustainability to reuse and uh, recycle. So some of people's community, instead we donate, some they burn, some they just uh, burn and the, just throw anyhow. So how, how can you say, encourage those people, don't throw this material or this tool so can recycle. How can we encourage? Yeah, yes. Oh, okay. How can you be how how to encourage those people that no need to throw this uh, clothing? Because we can recycle, we can reuse, and we can put produce again. That's what I mean. Okay. Asking. All right, thank you. Okay, guys, we all know that we can please everyone, right? No matter how much you educate everybody, there is a certain percentage in the population who doesn't understand, especially those people who can't relate to what you're talking about. We're talking about fashion. This is not the only environmental sustainability that they can do. If they don't know how to do a fashion sustainability, they can do other ways instead. 
like the one that's being discussed just now, the water. And what's the first thing? Uh, yeah, it's, it's the water. water. Well. It's still on the water as well. Yeah, the water. Okay. And the other environmental sustainability. The first thing you should do, you should do, I think, you should ask all those um, uh, communities do a proper um, awareness to everyone. Like what H and M. If you, I, I'm pretty sure not all of you knows that if you're going to get to give all your, uh, you know, exchange your old clothes to them, they're gonna give you a 10 percent. So if all the fashion industries were going to start doing like that, then I'm pretty sure many will be encouraged to give their old clothes in this fashion. So because the whole world, so we are getting this uh, old clothing, throw here, throw there. So which is, um, we, if we encourage those people before buying this uh, clothing, or if you want to, if this clothing is all, you can give back and we give you the temper. But how you will encourage those uh, companies you also? Companies, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, I'm using the already for you. <laughs> Janice, all right, Janice. Uh, those companies right now, those fashion industries, they are the ones who's actually doing the first step because of all the campaigns that everybody is doing. So not only the fashion industries, but other industries. So they are the ones who's doing the first step. <coughs> That's why they're using 3D printers. They're using AI. They're using the BioCouture. Many of them, many of the love stars are trying to find ways to use uh, biodegradable materials in your fabrics, which is used to turn into fashion clothes. Did I answer your question correctly? Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Clothing, like for let's say for example the jeans. We are uh, the jeans. I know they normally uh, bleach the jeans, which is a lot of uh, the use of chemical. Yes. That's all. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Malaysia. Well, for that, what you want to know? What am I? I how to prevent? Okay. Nowadays, the industries are using these three D printers. By using these three D printers, it lesser the usage of those chemicals, and then. Uh, it also lesser the use, the, the consumptions of those unused materials and fabrics. So as uh, using fabrics, you're right, um, it causes a lot of water. It causes water pollution. So that's why they are the first one, fashion industry, who are taking a big step in collaborating and using those technologies to defenders, AI, and all those things. Have you seen Gigi? I think it was yeah. Bella or Gigi had did do the paint, the modeling for the paint or not in, in her had fashion it. show. Gigi had did it. So those fashion industries actually they're the first one taking a, a first step that we just didn't know because we all thought that by buying those uh, organic, bio couture, novel fabrics, it will be very expensive. But actually, nowadays, 3D printing, it costs a masses like uh, a bulk by bulk printing of clothes, which can do your fast fashion very change, you know, can, can cope up with the fast fashion industry by limiting the wastage of all those other materials usage and other chemicals using it. Did I answer yes. it? Yeah, <laughs> no problem. Yeah. I have a follow up question. Okay, yes. Um, your question is uh, the, the companies were not using the chemicals. Um, they cannot totally eliminate using the chemicals because we need it. We need the dyes for the colors or, the, or unless you want to just wear black and white. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.
little bit to actually to make sure that your guys look good on the picture thing. Okay, so without further ado, I'm Sid, and I, as I promised you guys, I have a very important person, which is our VIP. Okay, so she is the uh, director from the sales uh, department from the Resident Radisson Hotel itself, and her name is Miss Surient. Okay, so she's going to share with us. So let's welcome, warm welcome, Miss Srianti, please. Thank you, Miranda. Well, um, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I appreciate that Melani invited me standing here. I um, would like to introduce myself and then uh, welcome to Radisson Golf and Convention Center. Well, my name is Surianti. I'm the uh, Director of Development, Radisson Golf and Convention Center. As an honor to you that um, would like to explain a little bit about the, what is our awareness and then what have been done for not the earth but in our environment to support and then um, to 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 introduce that uh, to our environment as an example that we are here as an corporation uh, <coughs> taking care of our environment, our staff, and our owner. So this is me, and this is Radisson Golf and Convention Center. Would like to um, explain, because this subject is about the environment and sustainability, so the, 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 the one or what have we have done, what uh, we have done, for this uh, subject. Hotel has done some support and keep going to do responsibility business uh, to the environment and community. And also, um, do we have a picture like this? Oh no, <laughs> I think we have <coughs> Well, um, this hotel already already established about seven years. So we have three, uh, three floor that special uh, for long stay guests. We allocate the guests who are staying more than three months, six months, one year over in that floor. So why we give them this um, bucket, I mean uh, like what, what we call laundry bag actually. However, this is um, not coming, not made by plastic. This um, raw material is made by the people from Bali and we bought from that. And this is from the one plant in Bali that can survive and Indonesia said it uh, ratikan or apa ya, anyaman. Anyaman, we name it Anyaman, Anyaman, yeah. So, uh, without doing plastic, that every day they can put the, uh, some laundry, they put it there, and then can be established, I mean, uh, it can be used until one year more. So, it is, will be reduced and avoid of plastic. Yeah, and Yaman, but a little bit similar <coughs> like bamboo, but not right uh, so. It is, it is, the plant is, um, dia hidup di rawa-rawa gitu, yeah, um, almost, yeah, that is similar like this. But we bought from Bali and then the, uh, this very, uh, I mean, it can be used for longer time. Yeah. One sample to reduce the plastic because we try to avoid plastic actually. Nowadays, we see that a bottle, mineral water, but this bottle can be recycled. Yeah. yeah. So we try to avoid plastic another one year advance <coughs> and we will replace this bottle becoming <coughs> Uh, glass bottle. So this is our aim next year or two years coming. Because in in Radisson we are trying to reduce plastic. Another 
example, straw. If you are coming to restaurant or you have uh, ordered some greens from our back restaurant room service, we don't use straw plastic anymore. This is from um, paper and can be recycled, recycling as well. Uh, soap for hope. You know, you can imagine how many soap. If you stay in one one day, stay in one day uh, in one <coughs> hotel. I mean, uh, there is the liquid soap, right? And also there is hand wash soap also. So by then, I'm sure you will not finish all the soap. I think yeah. you will leave it. Yeah. So this is left over. However, we don't throw it to the bin. We recycle. We collect. We clean it. And then one organization, we work together with diversity, and we do recycle. We clean it. We redo again as a soap like this. It's already seven years. We done. It's already seven years. Radisson Batam who does it but every Radisson in the world do the same because this is our program okay so for, to where is it bought by some uh, companies again no but this is the result after recycling we distribute to suburban slum house <coughs> whoever they are that we are thinking need to be helped Okay, the sample can be like this. So we distribute, we deliver to them, do the social. So they can clean, they can use it as a soap, they can use to brush or anything, but this is very helpful to them. Okay? And next, we do already recycling bottles and boxes. You know, mineral water, we have every day, we spend a lot of boxes. For example, 50, 30 to 50 boxes cardus Indonesian name it. We have it a lot of. And 238 rooms times two bottles and more every day the gas spend. For example, today occupancy 55%. It's meaning more than 155 rooms times two bottles. Sometimes they spend four bottles every day. Times how many, how many? So it's very a lot of plastic they throw to the and becoming uh, garbage. And I mean, a lot of they don't responsible. Sometimes Batam people just throw it to the sea. And it's very pity. You know, fishermen cannot uh, do fisher right now because it's already so many pollutant, so many pollution in the sea. So we try to minimize, minima, minima, minimize this uh, waste of uh, plastic. So what could we do is housekeeping people will do separation between plastic and uh, boxes, cardus boxes. So they do it every day, and every two days or three days, collector, because we collaborate with one company uh, in Batam that are very, very taking care of the environment. The name of company is WIK, that product is electronic, very ex expensive copy machine, electronics, they produce in Batam. And after Indonesian people do that production, they send it to Germany. Yes. And the, that they need recycling. So that production, that items, is made from some <coughs> materials that have been recycled. So that is. And after that, 
uh, every week we have uh, some some uh, I mean we have some tons or a container of most most item like this and they do they don't buy from us but they give us token that token has money inside but that money we didn't take it any penny from that but we contribute to the people who are willing to have it we pay a slam house we pay people who are going to school we do the same like that by not giving cash money to them this company will help us to do the same so we do it and we will do it after years coming because it's very helpful and we are taking care of environment and also about pool we have two pools in this hotel one infinity pool on the 10th floor and one at the first floor this is uh, outdoor swimming pool so not to wash many uh, cubicle of water so we do maintenance by chlorine but with uh, chlorine I mean not a very with the standard international standard chlorine and also we are maintaining about the pH of the water by then we don't wash the water often okay and the other side and the other one about fuel and water because water in <coughs> Batam we are difficult to get water we only have source <coughs> water because we are in one island yeah? no mountain no we just have sea in this surrounding so we have to take care about our water however what we have done to uh, to maintain the garden because we we are we are living in the surrounding the gardens so rain water we have um i mean we have the what do we call it um like one tanky yeah, tank tank to uh, to collect the rain water and after that it will be used by gardener to play to rain the water around them. Yeah. And also about the gas. Last time we are paying so much to pay uh, gas in the kitchen. However, we change it from liquid gas to be compressed to natural gas. And this is very effective. So it is one of our effort to reduce <coughs> every single penny and taking care of the environment and also from boiler fuel to boiler gas so those are the effort work we have done we are responsible for uh, our responsible uh, responsibility business is uh, respectful of human rights and also we protect children and also it's expat international. That's all from us. Anybody want to ask questions? Hello, I'm Joy. So you were talking about the soap and uh, I am very interested to know, you know, how is the process making the used soap mm -hmm. into a new one and to become clean and distribute it to people who need it. Yeah, uh, from my <coughs> pictures, there are some uh, process actually. After we collect it, the mm -hmm. we will do clean yeah. and then do liquid again. Yeah. They will cut it. Also the solid <coughs> soap will yeah. turn into liquid. Yes, and no. after that, they do uh, <coughs> not plating, but they <coughs> they do it again, and after that, they um, make like uh, oh. hard soap again, and it's done, and after that, distribute it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, I saw that. Do you raise up a little bit?
afternoon, ma'am, and good afternoon to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Questions, yep. but I'm going to ask something is possible. To be uh, as being proud of this day, student, uh, is there is in the future after graduation or after our our diplomas, is there is a possible or uh, a possible that we can uh, we are qualified to apply in the future in this hotel if you need uh, if you hiring again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good question. We are looking. We are looking for uh, some expert people. I mean, based on the qualified, and it is okay. It's possible because uh, we are in sales department looking for people who can expert uh, grabbing the business uh, from Singapore, and I'm looking on it. And also, we have some uh, vacation now because. Now this hotel is uh, opening the one cafe, the Minel Cafe, we name it, and we are looking some people. <coughs> so it doesn't matter you just register and send the CV to our HR in our website also, you may find it. And then it doesn't matter, I think it's open for everyone as long as the qualification is there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, next. Let's see. Good afternoon, Mom. My name is Leslie. Uh, yeah, um, I'm really concerned. And I'm, I'm really concerned and really, I'm not going to ask any question, but I am really wanted and interesting to know and have a little bit of knowledge about the gas, um, about the gas. How did you, uh, because I'm sorry, I don't have any knowledge about it and I really wanted to have at least and learn from you that about the natural gas, how did you do that? Yeah. Previously, we already uh, use fuel, I mean gas, not gas, but liquid gas. All right, I'm sorry. From, uh, liquid gas okay. that Indonesian people bought it bottle. So one bottle, big bottle like that, starting from one kilogram, 10 kilograms per bottle, cubicle, like that. And after that, we spent so many. But after that, uh, there is, we are trying to analyze <coughs> if we use gas in this hotel, we can reduce almost 75% of expenses. And also, we don't use so many bottles anymore because that gas, we have to install uh, pipe. Okay. So installation of pipe in the beginning we have to pay a lot. Yes, of course, because cost of production. And after that, you will win yearly and you pay less monthly because that gas is very, um, I mean, you don't need to uh, use a lot because gas, I don't know engineering do that. However, it's very useful. So in the beginning, gas production to do it and installation, yes, it's higher because you don't use models on it. However, now we are lucky, 75% also ready on it. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sharon? Uh, yes. Hello, good afternoon, ma'am. Yeah. I'm Janice. Yes, yes. My question is about the, this plastic. <coughs> plastic is uh, <laughs> most dangerous to our health because of this carbon dioxide. So, not only one hotel, but a lot of hotels, they are starting to get right this plastic. So they also start using this, uh, instead of plastic, they use paper, glasses, or aluminum. So this plastic also, how, how can you, how to, what do this, recycle, or cannot damage other uh, for our health, because I'm, I want to, what I, what I need is 
to get rid of this plastic and we use paper which is this paper we can also gather with other farmer that can produce so like reuse recycle and produce uh, uh, do you understand my what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> what I mean is <laughs> to help the farmers. Farmers, they are also produce the raw material that can use in hotels, right? just like a uh, basket. Yeah. So this also can help the farmers. Correct. Yeah. Then how about the plastic? How if you, just now you say you are to start after two years, start to get right all these plastic bottles. Yeah. So in hotel, instead of a plastic bottle, I just wonder what kind of uh, bottle instead of this plastic. Okay, so we just pour that uh, Later on, we will start to replace this plastic bottle with glasses. So glasses bottle will be used. And it can be recycled again. And another hand, if you are going to restaurant, we appoint also to do um, room service or taking uh, taking order, take away, sorry, take away with plastic. We appoint that. We use now all with uh, paper. <coughs> yeah. So we try. Okay. Thank you. All right, Charlie. Yes, good afternoon. Um, my question is about the uh, putting chloride in the swimming pool. Yeah. So after you do it, uh, you treat it for like that. Uh, you take the pH balance. Because as we all know, sometimes uh, other companies or other hotels use chlorine. But it almost be safe. It's just a pH balance. Um, how long or how many uh, take months? Maybe for it to you do the treatment and then, and then after that. Is there a possible, is there a time where you dispose all the water in the swimming pool and put another new one? And then Again. So what's the process of that? Yeah, so far we have to do two times a year, every six months, we empty that swimming pool and recycle and then do re renew one. However, if the chlorine is stable and pH is stable, uh, I think more than six months also is still available. Because we check it every day, we have the data. Yeah, this hotel is very concerned about the healthy environment because most of our uh, guests are coming from every nation in the world. So mostly European people is very taking care and then very sensitive about the water. Yeah, and most of the oil and company in Batam very um, implement about the sustainability. That's why we don't, um, I mean, it's very serious thing in our uh, duty yeah. that we have to get data every day. If someone get, get itch or something happened in the skin, we are looking at the data what we have. So every day, one person should be concerned about the older maintaining. That's why, um, but mostly, Every six months, we try to renew again, uh, to renew the water. Uh, where do the water from the swimming pool, the sea dispose, uh, goes to? Because uh, 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 um, if, uh, yeah, if it's been, the pH level is not there anymore, and then you have to dis uh, uh, you know, throw it away, where did it go to? Because um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you can water the plants with all those, um, you know, uh, yeah, chemicals yeah. Yeah. and water it. So where did it go after it? Yeah. Uh, we have the water, yeah, we throw, of course, but we cannot use it to plant and everything. But we have a tanky downstairs that can be uh, processed again before we throw okay. to the plant. Yeah, so it's already uh, It's like motorized to clean it and to take away of the chlorine and then do um, really, really, I mean, penyaringan with the filter, yes, do really, really filtering, and how to get it, we throw it away. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.
uh, I would like to ask, how do we know that the recycled soap in process is not contaminated by any virus from other people that they use? Uh, is it uh, certified, uh, proven by any laboratory? Yes, of course. Yeah, Diversi, if you search in Google, Diversi is one of company that big in the world who distribute and produce chemical. And those are, the chemical is very, um, I mean, the chemical is not, I mean, it's, it's familiar and very soft. I mean, uh, when we are a bacterial killer, but not, uh, not destroy the environment. I mean, diversity is international license of certification of company that already been approved. So before they do distribution to the soil, they do um, testing, they do, uh, they do, they, they make sure that no virus, that no bacterial inside, because that is concerned about humanity. That's why we understand that this product can be, uh, we understand that we can collaborate with them because they are responsible also mm -hmm. about the environment. That's why. So we don't only uh, recycle again, do it again, and distribute again. However, we already research, do research, and after that, we see the people when they are using until it's already well or it's already good to be used. So no effect anymore. <coughs> yeah.
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Miss Melanie and Miss Vivi. Uh, me, myself, Jessa, and these two beautiful ladies. Uh, these ladies help to introduce yourself. Um, hi, this is Vigma. Hi, my name is Bessie. Hi, yeah, uh, when we say gardening, it is usually involves the word soil, which is a crucial component of different kinds of plants to grow. But an indoor hydroponic garden uh, tells us a different story. And Ms. Bessie will start the presentation. Yes, you can grow anything, that's true. But 
in hydroponic garden, uh, a hydroponic garden requires a patient, labor, and attention. Choosing a right plants to grow in a hydroponic garden is just the first step. You will need a proper knowledge to set up the system. I will advise you, you should have the passion for what you do and surely you will succeed. Uh, for example, those are the edible and easy plants to grow in hydroponics. Like uh, leafy vegetables, um, like broccoli, like some spinach, and some kinds of herbs. And where you can grow, having a hydroponic garden uh, in the property also helps the hotel to lower their cost. Even if the farm can replace all the food, uh, sorry by the hotel, it does a great job of supplementing food that has extra cost like shipping. Crops grown in the hotels, indoors, rooftops, and hydroponically grown in anywhere with 1.3 square meter space on earth at any time of the year regardless of the weather condition. I pass it to Miss Nima for the next slide. So can I have the next slide please? Um, hydroponic system for hotels and restaurants. So I would like to um, uh, read out the benefits. So benefit of growing in house restaurant. So the farm to table, what does it mean? So it's concept farm to table means since the hotel accepted the hydroponic, if they have hydroponic farming, they can just like it's like just go there and pick the the vegetables and bring it to cook and then serve to the customer. And the next, the fresh produce, since they are not getting from any other country or the shipping from any other location. So that it will be like more and the compared to the shifting uh, vegetables, very fresh. And then the next, the evergreens. Oh, it's one of my favorite. So that if the hotel does the hydroponic, adopt the hydroponic farming, when the customer comes to add, to, to the, their drying, the dining in, so they will just look at that uh, hydroponic farming, the little plants growing in a like, little pots. How cute is that? So that will add like greenery surroundings to the customer, I would say. And then the next, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, grow anything and anywhere and no transport. So no transport means what? Since the, they have adopted the hydroponic farming at their own hotel. So we don't need any transportation and it will save the cost. Also, I'd like to add the point, the plastic bags, where uh, many people will shift their vegetables, the products from other countries. Even we see in the supermarket, right? The product from Malaysia, packing the plastic. The product from USA, a potato pack, you know? Plastic bags, so we'll save that one. So we'll not use the any plastic. So I hope that will also bring a lot of changes in the environment and then better quality. Obviously, we'll have a better quality. Since we are having like um, the fresh homegrown um, vegetables, so there's no question about like we'll not have the better quality. And less space and more girls, as less you mentioned, like the, it doesn't need a really huge land, so as it can be grown like in a farm kind of place where you can just, you, you should know the knowledge how to grow that thing. So obviously they will say, but like uh, compared to the traditional, traditional land farming, they will save a lot of space and also they will have a more faster, uh, nutritious, fresh vegetable. And lastly, I would um, like to say, um, in my own own personal um, belief, hydroponic truly has the as the future of the uh, future of the farming and also um, the agriculture sector because, as we mentioned, there are many factors we can help the um, sustainability environment, and then also the, it can be the food security, uh, the big plus point, because we have been to, gone through the COVID-19, 
So there were a lot and lot of the food shortage. So if the Bhutan and the, even if we adopt the hydroponic in at our home, that might help for us. If we face anything like this, like uh, COVID, we can um, save ourselves. Like, you know, not everything, but somehow, we don't need to depend everything on others. So I would say, please go through in, in the Google and try to help a little bit more. And if you like it, just go ahead. It's gonna help everybody and the environmental. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. You had eight time. Ooh, All right. Don't make me nervous, okay? I told you guys already. <laughs> So I just want you to, um, I just want to ask a question on how hydroponics are, I, I know hydroponics are very expensive. It's expensive. How can you convince me or the hotel organization to convert to hydroponics gardening? Example, we don't use soil, right? We don't use soil in this one. Yes. So what are we going to use as an alternative to plant the seedlings? You know, to you know, because this is still part of the environmental system. What, you know, I, I know the answer, but I just want you to. <laughs> yeah, okay. so thank you, Ms. Winley, for the wonderful question. Okay. Hopefully, I can deliver my wonderful answer as well. Okay. <laughs> uh, right. Um, so, your question is that what is the alternative that you can grow without seed? Isn't right? Um, seedless. Yeah, what, <laughs> no. what no, what are we going to use uh, as an alternative to plant the seedlings? Seedlings, I see. Yeah. To plant the seedlings, um instead of using soil, what are the other alternatives? Right. Okay. Yes, yes. And how can you convince me or the hotel organization to convert to hydroponics uh, gardening? Do you like to eat tauge? <laughs> yeah, the green green beans. So, for example, the green, green beans, right? If you soak it into the water, it will grow, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's one of example. Hopefully, I deliver the water. <laughs> you mean the bean sprouts? Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 It's a green beans. Yeah, because I've been I've been growing hydroponics. I have been growing seedlings. It will take you uh, two weeks to grow a uh, seedling. Yes. And yes. Yeah. That you will not put it first in the hydroponic system. So you need to grow the seedlings first before it grows. Yeah, that's yeah, why so it's hydroponics is made in the water. Base. Yeah, yeah, first that one. But you need it bef uh, when the seedling is like two to three centimeter. Then that's when you're going to put it in the hydroponic system because the that system has already like uh, their nutrients. You put some chemical in there to uh, I think I'm sorry, to grow. It's like when you put soil, I mean, when you, you you use the soil, you put chemicals to, to um, help them grow, right? Nicely, right? That also includes the water. So there's chemical already there. If it's already like two to three inches, then that's when you put it, or of course it will die if not. So we would take two, uh, two weeks, two 30 days to um, harvest the plant. So. How, how can you convince us, you know? It, just water alone for two weeks from from seeds to seedlings will you know will not will not sprout by itself. Um, you need you need something. So that's that's an alternative that I want you to answer. Uh, hi, good afternoon. Thank you for the good question. I think my answer for that is we need something like a cloth to, to put it the seed on it and we put some water on it to make it like, like a little damp cloth. Or maybe we can use like the coconut husk to put the seed inside the coconut husk to make it sprouted. I think I answer your question. Yes, yeah. No, it's masito. Masito. Don't make me confused. Spread to the question, please. Hello, everyone. It's very nice discussion. Uh, Thank you. Really interesting about the 
body as well, even I myself love the plants. So do you guys already try about this in the body itself, yourself in your home? As person now the fear is about mosquito, number one. <laughs> you know everyone's worried about mosquito. See, uh, do you guys already try by yourself before you uh, like go to the other people and explain about this little body? Because I myself also like the pony, all the plants. It look like it's a very easy. Put in the plant into the water or the seed into the water, and then eventually you can grow, right? So you guys already try by yourself. Okay, I can answer that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Obviously, we didn't do it right now, but even I haven't shared to my teammates. But in India, I used to do that. But at that time, I did not know it's a hydroponic I was doing. What I used to do is like, I used to bring an empty jar and I used to put the onion on top and then I used to grow the spring onion. So whenever I needed some spring onion to for garnish, I used to just chop it on and then put it on garnish, fresh and then best quality, healthy. So I think that's also a like type of a hydroponic. So I have done that one, and even I have done the, the, you know, even I have tried in Singapore, like putting, you know, like small jars, like cutting the roots of the thing. So I have done that one, and I have um, grown very beautiful greeneries, and I use even still here. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, hi, good afternoon. Uh, I just want to add you something, uh, the question. I want to add some, yeah, and my knowledge. Before we do this presentation, actually I tried by myself. You know uh, what I do is I take the mint leaves, the stem, and I put it in one cup. And I think I show it to this blessing also my project. I did it for myself. Yeah, we did that also. And yeah, it's success. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm a her. <laughs> <laughs> I know you very well. <laughs> Yeah, my question is, what are the rest to be aware to use hydroponics? Because it's very dangerous, especially uh, when it's very sunny, then how can you uh, uh, stop all those rest? Uh, risk? Risk. Uh, risk. Risk. Um, as far as I know, there's no any risk about it. Because um, if you are talking about strong sun, you can do what you're gonna do. That's the reason why we can do like a cover. Okay. Yeah, like a greenhouse. You can do like a greenhouse. And then, of course, if you are um, trying to um, be aware about the mosquito or any bugs, so about it. It's not mosquito because the hydroponics is can be dry. Because mosquito it, is yeah. one of oh, is, so it, I missed. Yeah, it's also a uh, hydroponics can be dry now. It's like a paper, so it's easily to be burned. So if, how can you uh, how can you avoid this and then uh, you know uh, it's also for environment. Yeah. Um, thank you for that wonderful question. Um, as so what I said is that it's a water and of course if you are implementing a water base or hydroponics um, farming, you have to be um, be careful and learn all about it and then you have to check daily about the mosquitoes or any risk. Thank you, Marika. Thank you. Uh, I just want to add some of the answer to that question. <laughs> My simple answer for that question is I think you should have a proper knowledge to set up the system. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, hold on. Uh, Grace, you have a question? Uh, sorry, it's not it. Ah, Anthony. Yeah, no problem, Anthony. Good afternoon, everyone. Guys, do you want me to summarize uh, a brief summary about the hydroponics since I, I, I did my practice for how many years already at home? Of course, if you like to. Okay, to so the first thing is uh, it's because the question is about mosquitoes, so you must provide one mosquito net. This is very useful. Mosquito net to cover the whole thing and then you fill up the, the how to say, the, this um, every level of water and also you must put a small spoon you must enough uh, water and also enough sunlight when you pour already the seeds yeah. and also uh, my question is um, do you add any fertilizer to your 
uh, seeds. No. I think. Yeah. Do you want yeah. I mean? I think the place you already mentioned, we don't use any chemicals. Any chemicals yeah, but, but for use. example, do you want to use any fertilizer? Not in your in your uh, presentation, actually. This is my own question because I've been using fertilizer. Yeah, um, uh, to be honest, as far as I'm concerned, I eat and eat. No, I really feed by my own at home. And you can grow um, any kind or you can grow some of the vegetables that it doesn't need the required pesticides, cultivating, or any uh, um, um, Yes, I understand that, but it's my own question. If you have a chance that somebody asks you or refer to you or recommend you to to use any fertilizer, what kind of fertilizer you are using? Okay, I will give you the choices. Do you want to use organic fertilizer or any kind of fertilizer? Yeah, that's what I, I have an uh, answer for that question, Ms. Adeline. Thank you so much. Uh, for me, I think is if you grow the hydroponics in your house, because it's a special, uh, it's a small hydroponic farm only, you can use only those kind of pots or something like glass, yes, for your kitchen mates. I think this one, you doesn't need any chemical for this, but if you have a hydroponic farm in the hotel, like a, like a, like a, like a, a quite big yeah. one, I think you must have the right. special chemical for this, but it's not harmful to the environment, yes, like a pH right. balance. Yes. So you can put that every three days because you know what you put it, the, the plants will grow very fast. Yeah, you feed the plant, it will grow very fast. I will assure you. Right. So yeah, yeah, I think you should have to control also yes. the pH. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, enough sunlight, yeah. enough water. That's all. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I saw a uh, very exciting uh, party <laughs> for the mic. I saw Grace, Mary, and uh, this Mary Grace. Oh my God. We have a crowd. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure they raise my hand. This is the mic is with me. <laughs> so I'm, sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if, if you will mention it here, but um, I just want to know if there are any ongoing research and development efforts in the field of hydroponics. Yes, of course. Um, um, yes, yes. The China is doing it, and the US is doing it. And then you know what? Um, India, to be yes, the Indian culture, mostly they are doing it. And then you know yeah. what? Um, in 2050, the population is growing like, you know, 2050 around the billion. So, the, the, you know, the special, the people who created this hydroponic farming, they are looking forward and making the awareness for these. Yes, thank okay, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mary, please. <laughs> are hydroponics high maintenance? Oh, Hi, yes. sorry? Yes. Are hydroponics high maintenance? Yes. Yes, yes, because hydroponics. Uh, if you have a hydro, if you have a hydroponic plants, uh, uh, it it requires a uh, patient and labor and attention for this. Yes, it's costly for the first time, but it will save money in the long run. How much the cost to your health? Let's say because it is now for my, I I give uh, you know yeah. a little bit of uh, cost. How much you you can right. have? Actually, Actually, it doesn't require a really big, huge amount of market car. Um, for I, like, like for example, said, let's say uh, you know a small one, or for your just for your home, if you if you right. want to. So how much can be cost? Yeah, just a right. Small one. For example, if you cost about that, of course you will have definitely or obviously you can't be spend a single penny in it because you have to buy the seedlings. You have to buy. Uh, some things that yeah. you have to grow it. And, exactly, that's why. And I, some the nets I'm just, or I'm just asked how much the cost. Yeah, for example, that's why I say so like the estimated. Dollars? Let's yeah. say, let's say you have actually just the, just the number. It could be five hundred, depend of the how big or how huge. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Last question, Sherilyn. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I have two questions. I'm still thinking about Sherilyn. Yeah. <laughs> Hydroponics in the hotels. Yes. So, in the hotel, there are just a few restaurants. In it. Yes. So you're going to be competing with all those organic farmers. So how are you going to produce your hydroponics garden within the hotel? Because hotel, as we know, really focuses 
on what they need in just one establishment, like a restaurant, because they can just order from the garlic farmers rather than growing a hydroponics farm or greenhouse within themselves, unless the chef really wants a healthy green. So, um, okay. So I got the question, but um, I would say, okay, <laughs> I would say, of course, it's not possible for the, for maybe that small hotels because it needs a cost and it's a maintenance for the people, right? Mm -hmm. So the big hotels like Bradisian is a big hotel. Of course, they are doing a lot of uh, environmental sustainability thing. Obviously, if they want to um, attract the customer, because nowadays, you know, everybody wants to eat healthy, live healthy, eat organic. So if, with keeping in that mind, obviously the hotel will put the effort to um, to give that benefit to the customer and also to attract that um, eco-friendly guest. Obviously, if I see that nice thing, I would love to know that. How did you do that? Uh, can you give me some knowledge? So obviously, so it's a uh, matter of awareness. If we uh, try, there's no like you know, no way to, like it's impossible. So impossible is possible. <laughs> thank, right. you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. I have a follow. Thank you. Maybe just a last one. Last one. Sorry. Um, can your hydroponics garden farming or green farming sustain the the the, the input of all those uh, ingredients that uh, or the the material of the plants or the ingredients that you need in your in your in your cooking in the hotel? Of course. Of course, it's not everything, right? Mm -hmm. We just mentioned like just a few only, what you can grow and what you not. Of course, we, they cannot be grow like something which has to, has to go to the underground, right? It has to go to the ground. <laughs> which we can grow in the water base, of course, they will try for that and they will use for that for the best quality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So there's a whale 
that goes into the shore and then after a day it died. So the ricopsy uh, revealed that um, the whale have like 40 kg of plastic in the stomach. So it's a bad news. So plastic is everywhere. So wherever you go, wherever you look at, it's everywhere. So um, in US alone, so there's six, uh, one out of six water bottle is recycled. And then the rest will go to landfills, um, canals, oceans, and lakes. So, um, so according to uh, uh, Ellen MacArthur Foundation in the U.S., that uh, plastic, because it, we just use it one time, so plastic can cost a lot. So it costs about 80 to 120 billion annually. So what happened is, and then it takes a thousand years to biodegrade. So meaning, we all dead by then, our soul is already reincarnated, and the plastic is still there, doing damage in our earth. So is the government doing something about it? Yes, the government and NGOs. Is it enough? No. Can we do more? Yes. But we have to educate ourselves about it. And then the last part is, um, so, sorry, China and U.S. is taking turns to be the number one producer of plastic, but the most effective one is the third world country, which I believe is our country. Why? First, it's very costly. Sustainable is very costly. So this third world country cannot afford to do everything recycled and lack of knowledge Sometimes we just don't bother. Thank you. <laughs> and then I will pass the chair over the solution. Uh, so for the solution, reduce, reuse, recycle. How will we do that? Reduce. Imagine that when you go to the when you go somewhere outside and then you forget your water bottle, you will end up buying this. So by making sure that you have this one in your bag will help you. <laughs> Nice one, Cheryl. So, uh, so instead of buying, make sure that you have your water bottle because as what Joy said, that out of six bottles, only one is recycled. And not every one of us will gonna reuse those plastic bottles because recycling them will, uh, uh, is also causes damage on our health. So we end up throwing it. And by uh, by reusing it or uh, recycling it, uh, we should know that when we buy something, we should know what kind of bottles is that, so that we know where it goes, we know where, uh, uh, how, we, how are we gonna recycle it. Educate ourselves. So by educating ourselves, we are saving the earth. And, um, Reduce and reuse, uh, recycling. There is this a company called Beston. Uh, I don't know if it's around China, uh, in Indonesia as well, but it's quite a huge company where they make the plastic bottles, especially this kind of bottle, the PET bottles, that they shredded it and make it into something new. As who knows, this carpet might be. Uh, came from plastic because those plastic bottles, the PET plastic bottles, can be used, can be made into carpets, filmings, or even magazines. Who knows? We don't know. And not every one of us knows that all those plastic bottles, even me, I don't know. But digging with it, recycling, and uh, researching it, I got to know that it can be done with. It can be used for carpets or even uh, uh, fabrics, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it can be used for the carpet. And uh, and then <laughs> now we can really see Cheryl. Yes. 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 Whatever. <laughs> yes. So plastic by uh, by knowing how to recycle it, we can be more responsible and um, can you go back this time? <laughs> so 
this local government must implement. You know, when we are saying recycling, none of us are gonna do it. In Singapore, I know when first uh, I, when I came here in Singapore, many uh, green, <laughs> many green those you know the the green big plastic rubbish bin. Oh, they are putting yeah, yeah. it everywhere. Mm -hmm. So for our cycling, mm -hmm. but none of uh, not all of us is very uh, industrious enough to go down and throw it. Why do why do we care when we can just open the rubbish chute? With them. But if the government will gonna give us something like I know one in Sentosa that you can collect all those bottles, drop it, and then you can have some points and get it uh, and use it for something like sports, sports facilities, it would be good. Who don't want points? Who don't want vouchers? Right? So, so, uh, by collaborating with the local government, business consumers who are businesses and consumers doing the recycling properly with these all plastic bottles, the PET bottles, and the HD. By the way, guys, the HDPE bottles, plastic bottles, are 100% recyclable. Those are those plastic bottles we use in our uh, public self dinner. They are 100% recyclable. So there are those times that when I use the bleach, sorry for using bleach, I know it's harmful. Uh, <laughs> you can you know, you can uh, get your empty uh, bleach bottles, go to the provision shop, and then you can you can deduct like fifty cents on the amount on the uh, original amount of the uh, uh, bleach. So why don't we do it? Right? It's not hard, it's easy, but you know, it helps us uh, live in a better community. So, we know that uh, uh, recycling uh, will cost, it's costly, but costly at first, but in the long run, it will not, it, it's not costly. So, by educating our people uh, to uh, sorting it out, all those plastic bottles and the collaboration between, between the NGOs and the government will help us to recycle, reuse, and um, <laughs> recycle, reuse, and uh, you know guys. <laughs> That's all, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, so in this section, first one I saw, uh, Wesley. <laughs> oh, hi, Cheryl. Hi. Uh, don't worry, you can ask a question, but I'm just going and give a little bit elaborate as well for the plastic um, recycles. Do you know, guys, that uh, at least for being recycles of plastic recycles, can we help those um, poor kids that uh, or those public school that we that being by recycling a plastic that we can um, recycle and use the tables. You can use a chairs, which is implementing in the Philippines as well, and we can donate those chairs to those schools to those public school that those kids, poor kids, that you can use it to stand. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Bessie. That's a good one. Uh, Mary Grace? Hello. Hi. I'm Mary Grace. Uh, I have a one question for you. Yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> do, you have, uh, do you have any idea how to educate other people to be responsible about throwing plastic? the problem in our environment, uh, any idea? Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, new idea. So, the government is doing a lot of campaign at the same time the non government support. But it's not enough because it's the production of plastic is just massive, tremendous. 
And then one of the things is their lack of knowledge. I am one of them. Because sometimes I throw away and then I go say, no, 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 no. <laughs> So I am one of them. I am guilty. So one of the things that's to prevent is to educate everybody. So if you have a daughter in the house, your family, just a word. This is recycle, not to recycle, and then uh, anything about recycle that you can share to them. I'm sure a lot of us is very knowledgeable at the moment since we are in Singapore, unlike before that we are in the Philippines. Because I'm sure we know we can see recycle bin everywhere in Singapore. In Singapore. In Singapore. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Janice. 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 Hello. Hi, Janice. Hi, Janice. Hello again. I have a super question. Because this plastic is the um, most problem in the whole world. Because even in the deepest ocean, like Marina Trans, can found the plastic. So this plastic, we should focus how to get right. So let, let us say, how we can stop using plastic. Because although we can recycle, but if we process again, it's a carbon dioxide. It, which is it's uh, bad to our pollution. So what are other alternative or let us say some other solution? It, uh, example, in even we are go shopping. I know that in Singapore we are start using paper bag. But how about other country? How about the other? I know that we need to uh, educate ourselves, but how we can, uh, what to is? How, <laughs> how we can, how we can, other ways, other, yeah. other ways of other using ways. plastic. And encourage others. And uh, also here in Batam, uh, plastic everywhere, Batam everywhere, plastic bag everywhere. So that's what I want to do. Thank you for your question, Janice. That's why I told in my uh, talk earlier talk that when you go to your wait, please, when you go to your your uh, shopping, make sure that your glass or your uh, water bottles is in your bag. And nowadays, actually, whenever I go to uh, to uh, NTUC or wherever, for me to reduce the usage of plastic, I don't. Uh, I, I make sure that in my bag there is always a, a, a shopping bag. And those times that I forget my shopping bag, I make sure that I can carry. Just like a uh, few days ago, I went to Shengshong uh, and I bought only a ginger and uh, this kind of soupy thing. I can hold it in my hand. Why would I ask them for plastic? <coughs> so, by educating everyone, yeah. And, you know, water bottles, <coughs> Even in Philippines, they are using it. The government is making a tremendous uh, uh, effort to help us reduce, stop using plastic. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you for your sharing. Details from the, from the question of, of Janice. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, okay. Now, um, just to you know, elaborate the ways that you can use plastic, which uh, I know that they know, but I just have to one <laughs> tell you. So, this is a plastic bottle. This is a single use plastic bottle. So, if you, if, if you don't know, you can really, um, uh, you can recycle it, but you cannot. Um, melt it or use it into other things. What you have to do is you can just take it out, use it as a soap dispenser. You can also See? use like in our place, we can uh, we, we use it like uh, Christmas decorations, yeah. pencil case. Use your imaginations, be handy, art and craft. You can use it just like everything that's about the sustainability, right? So let's not just throw away any plastic bottles and let's not buy all single-use plastic bottles. Let's not use those forks and foods that the um, fast food restaurants are using. Those are single-use plastic bottles that you just have to throw away. So 
Okay. But all right. So I think that's to wrap up the whole thing. Thank you. 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 Why? It's safe, the 
the soil because we have to protect inside the soil have a many uh, like worms to build the soil even more uh, uh, healthier right if the soil not healthy how you grow your plants as well and then yes <laughs> And just now you also mentioned is many of you how you use rainwater. Yeah. The rainwater, yes, is really good. Why? Because it's very really high pH levels. So this way uh, for the plants, outside the plants, you see everyone, everybody there water the plant every day, other things so especially on the forest, on the plant. Even your plant also I don't think so you sometimes you also forget, right? <laughs> water the plant forget, but for rainwater it can save your plants. Yeah. yeah, this is I want to share with you. If you have any question, I have feel free to share with you also. But interesting about the plants, so we can grow about the plants and environment. <laughs> Make the environment more friendly, not only at home. Processing of your organic fertilizer. <laughs> What's the process you do in your organic process? I pro my process. I love it. I uh, recycle the veggie, especially this is uh, every day we cooking, right? Mm -hmm. So the veggie, the branch cooking, you, you don't throw the the parent you don't throw it. You just flood it over to the soil. You, you guys realize the newspaper you can recycle. Also can use reuse as a plant. Uh, with the soil, we harvest again and make a compost to make it fertilizer. I think this is more healthier to make the soil come back to our home. Soil will come back again alive. Yes. So, yes. Okay, yes. Good job. Janice. 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 on the go. Janice is on the go. I have a simple question. Yes. 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 My question is because all of us we know the the norm, uh, compost yes. compost which is from the animals yes. right. this compost is uh, good for our plants and for the soil so if we use this uh, organic compost that we didn't, we don't need the fertilizer the artificial so how how can can you predict your plant how long can grow using the this organic fertilizer compare the artificial fertilizer? Okay. In Singapore, very I I'm scared uh, because I don't have the cow seed or chicken seed. Am I right? Uh, yeah. So in uh, our business is what we do. We keep the seed, then we cover it into the soil, and then we put the plants. This is the simple way, the simple method. All the business. We don't have any machine. So my suggestion myself, I ask myself, how I speak buy the machine. I cannot make the machine, right? So I buy the machine and then I make the fertilizer. Then I share with all the farmer who have the cow seed or the goat seed can sell to me, then I make the compost. That is what I want to do right mm. And then I can give you the five Star of your the five star feedback. <laughs> I give you the five star feedback about the tomato. Your tomato is very sweet because you, the way you take care of it, the way you plant with love. And about the plant, we need also some caring. Yes. Not only for the good fertilizer or organic fertilizer, it's also our green hand to handle it. It's not only that. Do you love plants or not? Plants <laughs> <laughs> also know about love. If you yourself don't love plants, I don't think you saw that love your family. So first thing you don't want to
motivate a farmer to use? Um, um, thank you, Miss. Um, um, organic rather than non-organic, which is those really very strong chemicals. How would you motivate those farmers to use um, a sheets from the cow or the goat or whatever it is coming from? So yeah. Yes. Go to remind my resource all the time. What I must get every day, one day for one person to answer my question. <laughs> so this is what I study with them. I have a Zoom with them. I talking with them every day. You want to work together? Uh, how is it? How you use the compost? Is it? How your cow is it? Where's your seed you throw away? You know. So I work together with them to find out how is it um, to get along with them. So I think it's more easier for me to make the fertilizer. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Shall Last question. Your question. Organic fertilizer, we all know that it is not much, uh, require a lot of uh, effort collecting it. So, organic fertilizer, well, what is the other alternative you are planning to when the organic fertilizer for your plant is running out? Running out, so this yeah. one is no more organic fertilizer and your plants need it, need it very badly. What alternative you want to do? Use. Yes, this is always I think a lot of problem of the farmer. Example is that last last year they uh, lost of the fertilizer, right? So what we do, we try to ourselves. We study like you say, study ourselves how to reduce again. See like the veggie or what you have at home. What the thing can recycle again. You recycle and make the compost again. Yeah, that is what I do. If, if the farmer itself, they also the same thing, I think. They, uh, when I asking them, uh, how you, because it's like one year harvest two times, if you use the organic. But it's not organic, can you four or five times, it's about the chili, it's the pasta. So what they do, also the same thing. They study itself, they do the recycle thing itself, if the cow see or the, use the uh, chicken seed, or the grass also can make the compost again. They try to feed a cow. So the, this is our study right now. Are you gonna force the, those animals to give you chicken? Uh, <laughs> some people, they have a cow, but they don't know how to do it. They just end how to. Why don't ask them and just sell to us? And then we make as the compost. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right.
solo rock. Thank you. All right, thank you, Masito. Thank you for your uh, very impactful yeah. sharing and the very deep questions. <laughs> <laughs> and to wrap us up, yeah? Okay, so of course, okay, uh, as I guess, all of you have enjoyed this entire afternoon with your own classmates, with our, you know, our VIP sharing. We probably learned a lot about the environmental sustainable, uh, sustainability, whether or not on housing rainwater, having rainwater, recycling as well, and also, of course our VIP sharing on hotels, uh, you know, efforts into the society on helping out the environment. Yeah? Okay, so of course, without further ado, let's put a wrap for this afternoon session. So I hope you guys enjoy this entire afternoon and hope uh, I hope the online audience also enjoy with us. So this is the wrap up for the research symposium and also exhibition 2023 in Batam Island. So stay tuned, we will be back soon. Thank you. Bye bye.